That's the great thing about this Louisiana marsh. The options are endless. You might come out one day planning to catch speckled trout. And maybe the specks aren't biting or they're not where you think they're going to be. So you target reds. You might come out one day trying to catch reds. And you fish bass. Just always something biting. You just got to kind of make the most of the day given the conditions. Now, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but they got a nice cove right here. We already made one pass here, and there's a ton of mullet inside of that cove. And we got to the other side of it and caught a fish. So we kind of circled back around, and we're going to make another drift through this cove. Where there's prey, there's usually predators. Oh, there he is! Boy, did he smack it! Not the biggest fish ever, but that was a very fun strike. Boy, I tell you, these redfish pull. You know, you look at this fish. It's not a giant red, but boy, they fight. Probably a 18, 19 inch fish. If you like eating fish, doesn't get any better than that. He hit the bait like he really wanted it. Wow, I'm just destroying the trash fish. It's actually early fall here in South Louisiana. This is when our water temperatures are at their highest and the salinities are at the highest as well. So this area we're fishing is loaded with ladyfish. We're catching a bunch of those as well. Or I should say we're hooking a bunch of those. They're generally jumping and throwing our hooks right away. Like that one. You know, unfortunately, the wind's blowing right into the sun, which isn't ideal for videoing, but something you want to keep in mind. When you're fishing this way, fish with the wind, not against it. you got a lot less hull slap on your boat. It's a lot quieter. Also, you're kind of moving toward your bait rather than away from it. You want to cast out ahead of where you're heading, and that way you'll be alongside your bait by the time you get it back to your boat. All right, Joel just hooked up. There he is. This is a good eating red right here. This is what you want. Nice, probably 18, 19 inch red. That's what you want right there. All right, so the reason this shoreline is so productive for us is because we got a falling tide. There's a massive pond off that way with a bunch of drains coming to this shoreline. This is a, a perfect kind of shoreline that you want to fish. It's got little bitty bays in it. It's got little points, and it's got trinasas, which, of course, are marsh drains. And that's what you want to fish on a falling tide. We had a rising tide. I would go actually back in the pond because that's where the fish are going to be. They're not going to be on these shorelines, by and large, when you have a rising tide. Then you want to get as shallow as you can. I'll take a falling tide any day over a rising tide fishing redfish. I absolutely love this style of fishing. My overall number one favorite type of fishing is for speckled trout. But this is a whole lot of fun. You don't sink the boat. We're not going to catch 100. You have to work a little bit, but that's what makes it fun. And by the end of the day, we should have a limit. If you're terrible, Oh, I suck him. Oh, Joel got one. Oh. He's a little bigger than I thought he was. There he is. He ain't happy. Oh, yeah, another good eater. Filling up the box quick. That's another good one. Oh, there we 
we go. That's a good red. Boy, did he drill it. Again, not that big of a fish, but boy, is he powerful. Oh, he had other fish with him. He had other fish with him. Bam. This water that we're fishing is just really pretty. And you can see it in the fish. It's just so dark. This fish is almost black along its back. All right, so today I'm fishing a 3 8 ounce jig head with a limbo slice colored matrix shad. Now I'm using 3 8 for a couple of reasons. Number one, this shoreline is really clean. There's not a lot of grass at all, submerged grass, I mean, along this shoreline. So I can get away with using a heavier jig head. Also, this shoreline has about maybe three or four feet of, of shallow flat up along the shoreline, and then it really drops off. And a lot of times redfish will run, cruise at deep water and run up to those shallows to go feed and kind of come back down. So I want something that I can work down that ledge, not too far, just a little bit down that ledge, and then I'll reel in and do another cast and retrieve. If this shoreline had some submerged aquatic vegetation along it, I would have to go with either a quarter ounce or an eighth ounce, or maybe even something weedless. When I find an area with kind of sparse vegetation, a lot of times I like to throw a spinner bait. Works great for, uh, for redfish fishing this, this style this way. Okay, I'm also using 30 pound braid. I fish braid all the time, whether for speckled trout, redfish, whatever, uh, bass. I just love braid, I'm a braid guy. I like being able to feel everything that is happening with the bait. Also, because I'm, I'm real uh, careful about visibility on my line, I never ever tie braid directly to the to the jig head. I've got a length of maybe uh, five feet of 20 pound fluorocarbon. I've got it tied together with a uni knot and tied to the bait with an improved clinch. Also, I'm using a Shimano Crucial uh, in medium heavy, very important. I want to rod with a lot of backbone when fighting redfish. Now the reds we're catching today, they're really 18 to maybe 22 inches at the biggest. We could get them in certainly with a medium, maybe even a me medium light if you want to increase the, uh, the fun factor. Uh, but sometimes you just really want to muscle those redfish in and that medium heavy comes in handy. Uh, I'm using as far as a reel, it's an Abu Garcia Revo. Uh, I really like this reel, uh, but I'll tell you this, for doing this type of fishing, nothing is more important than the rod. The rod is definitely more important than the reel. And that's really true for almost all fishing. Uh, if you're gonna spend a lot of money, spend the money on the rod. It makes a world of difference. Oh boy, look at that one. <laughs> now that one didn't smoke it, he just started running with it. And now he's not happy that he's hooked, not in the least. Now I know if you're watching from another state, you're thinking, how can these guys be keeping all these fish? We have a very rich resource here. We've got a five fish per person limit, not hurting the resource at all. It's a renewable resource. We've got plenty of these to make more of these and they were delicious.